I can do that. Yep. I'll do it now. Okay, great. Welcome back to episode 137 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy. And sometimes when I'm preparing for these intros, I just go blank. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's like a great intro that you just thought up of 30 seconds to go to. <laughs> <laughs> it has Shh, more flavor that way. reveal our secrets. <laughs> and I'm your other host, Mike. And LGSs across the country are already announcing that they won't be running Two-Headed Giant for Neon Dynasty release, claiming it's Kamigawa, not Kawigama. Mm. You're welcome. Yeah. Please listen carefully. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. So we do have uh, one small announcement here, and it is related to Unfinity. Um, there was an announcement this past week that says, due to the ongoing supply chain complications from challenges associated with COVID-19, the release of Unfinity, the fourth unset, which was originally slated to come out April 1st, 2022, is going to be delayed until the second half of 2022. This is not an April Fool's joke. I know that has that has, they said, yep, it's, it's not. Um, it says this delay is specific to Unfinity, and they're going to have more information to share in the coming months. And while they appreciate everyone's understanding as they work toward an updated release time um, for this wacky, uh, exciting set, it's just, it's not, uh, it's not coming yet. But we know that Neon Dynasty is not being delayed. So right. I, you know what? I can wait a little longer. I'm very, very excited for Infinity. Oh, and, yeah. and I get it. Uh, you cut, you cut the, you know, the extra set for the standard set like well, I, I get it or push it back I, honestly if they're talking about like manufacturing woes or something there's supposedly sticker cards in the set so i am like it's new technology if you will to, to are there sticker the cards in infinity so, i believe the um, i thought that was one of the secret layers there yeah so secret layer mischief uh, had sticker cards i believe the collector's edition of infinity the artwork oh, that we've seen did have sticker something in there. okay all right that so, that makes sense so uh waiting a little bit longer but uh, nonetheless, it's happening this year. Yes. And if you weren't aware, we are back to streaming. Um, if you haven't followed, please go over to twi to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Guardian Project Podcast. We're streaming every other Tuesday. Um, if you're listening to this on release day, we streamed yesterday. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, on January 25th. Um, so you can check out our next stream on February 8th. Um, and yeah, come on by, follow uh, so that you get notifications when we go live so that you don't listen to the podcast the day after we stream and go, dang it, I forgot to watch again. Yeah, that should be our thing. We always announce what well, we streamed yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it was it. a great game. It was a really great game. I haven't game. played it yet. Though. Oh my gosh, I won. <laughs> I really hope I do well. Calling it, putting it on the board. Put it on the board. <laughs> <laughs> and if you also hadn't heard, our merch store is live. You can head over to guardianprojectpodcast.com to pick one up. They are 30 dollars free shipping wherever you want um we have those we have well, thank you everybody who has purchased those yes. and we are seeing pictures of them on twitter yes. so it's very exciting we have confirmation that uh our our playmat arrived in alaska so if we can ship something to alaska we could ship it to wherever you are in. if you can dodge a wrench <laughs> you can ship a playmat that's right you can order our merch please do please be able to dodge and a wrench. also dodge wrenches <laughs> yeah. yes um, and if you also want to support us and get a playmat in maybe a different way, you can support us at uh, patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount. We've got lots of tears and lots of fun stuff to give away. And you're looking for another way to support the podcast, whatever platform you're enjoying the podcast on now, if you could subscribe, rate, review, and leave comments, we'd be most appreciative. And you can find us online at the guardian project podcast.com. Again, we're streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash guardian project podcast. Our social media is on Twitter at guardian pod, Instagram at guardian project podcast, game play videos can be found at youtube.com slash the guardian project and then you can email us at guardian project pod at gmail.com coil what are we chatting about this week uh, this week we are doing another patreon reward um, this is another patron deck tech from our patron micah who's bringing us a slippery simic brew helmed by Golmol gore moldrak amphenologist amphenologist um uh salamanders Lots of them. There's they're four threes, right? Yes, they are. And uh, and they're they're slippery. You want to slip right into it? So 
So we are talking about Gore, Maldrak, and Phenologist. Actually, a deck that I have experience with, a deck that I think is super duper fun, mm -hmm. and one that I have only played against one other person that had this deck. So oh, okay. uh, also in our Discord, and not Micah's deck. And actually, I had built this at one point, and mm -hmm. I think Micah's deck has a lot more going on than okay. my version had. I also didn't update it, and there's a lot of cards that came out within the last year Agreed. that that really gave some spice to Gore Muldrak, um, which is a 3-2 human scout for one, a green and a blue that says you and permanents you control have protection from salamanders. And it says at the beginning of your end step, each player who controls the fewest creatures creates a 4-3 blue salamander warrior creature token. Yeah, um, this one was printed in Commander Legends, uh, and that's that's where I saw it, um, but mostly in the 99 of people who are playing like Emoti, like they draft in an Emoti Commander Legends deck or something. Um, but yeah, Gore Muldrak um, in the 99 was really cool to see in a draft format, and it's cool to see how well it actually is working in a uh, constructed format here as well. Um, so... We are going to uh, start off with a little blurb that was given to us by Micah um, to really talk about what the deck is trying to do and uh, how we're going to go about that. So this Gore Muldrak deck makes an interesting promise. He will put a lot of power on the board and he'll protect you from most of it. However, it's up to you, the pilot, to see how well you can leverage this power, which is often in your opponent's hands to secure your victory. This deck is one of the time this deck is one of the first times where I feel my personality as a pilot is expressed in game decisions rather than in card choices. Gore Muldrak is giving out four threes left and right and center, and it's my job to persuade my opponents to keep hitting each other with their sick blue tokens. I like how it, it is framed this way because I feel the same way when I play this deck because you can give people creatures so mm -hmm. they don't get a 4-3. You can make sure that you get a 4-3 yourself by giving away one of your creatures. Oh, yeah. You really are doing a lot because you're controlling who receives a lot of power mm -hmm. with this deck. It's like it's like group hug, but like only giving out creatures to make sure that they can swing at your opponents. Hopefully they're swinging at your opponents and not at you. Right. Well, well I guess if they, they can't swing at you with your salamanders, as long as you have Gore Muldrak. If you have Gore Muldrak, and, and if they gave, if, if they have like four salamanders, yeah. they, you know, they can only block one of them. Yeah, and true. it does say that their strategy is to identify the player that's in the lead, which is easy since Gore Muldrak usually doesn't give that player any salamanders, right? So if they have a lot of creatures, mm -hmm. they're probably not going to get a salamander. Right, right. And it says opting instead to catch up the player who's furthest behind on board. So uh, he says he welcomes um, the player who has fallen behind into the salamander crew, <laughs> pointing out their mutual opponent's unfavorable trades with a 4-3. And, and they note that if their salamander dies in battle, Gore Maldrak is just going to replace right. the one that the person who potentially was furthest behind just lost, right? right? So if you swing that 4 3, they're going to lose their 4 3 and they're already ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you another one anyway. So For just sure. swing that Salamander Warrior over there. Not definitely not at me, though. <laughs> it's, it's actually very common to see Gore Muldrak decks play uh, permanents that actually uh, force give, combat. Well, yeah, force combat, but also make things unblockable. Yeah. But in this case, it, um, Micah doesn't want to make them unblockable because he wants them to trade. He wants the Salamanders to kill each other or. Uh, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. He wants things to die so that he can have more things enter the battlefield. Uh, so my new comrade often decides it's worth it to pressure the player in the lead. Of course, I also lead by example, sending my salamanders into the red zone every chance I get. Gore Muldrak only makes more salamanders if you have the fewest creatures, so your salamanders have to die for their slimy brethren to replace them. <laughs> he says it plays like an aggro deck and hopes to turn everyone else's decks into aggro decks as well. As the game progresses, the player that's in the lead um, and the player with the fewest creature really changes pretty often. And as Gore Muldrak pilot he tries to bob and weave through this challenging social landscape offering a helping salam hand mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, er, uh, to anyone in need never becoming the actual threat hopefully until the very very end when you take everyone else out when you when you look around the table and you're still at 40 life and everyone is sitting at 10 and they go wait a minute Maybe we've been doing this wrong the whole time, but it's already too late. I will say, as we put this episode together, the more and more we went through every individual card and, and prepared, I so badly just want to put mine back together because oh, yeah. I took it apart and I think I took it apart just before Strixhaven came out mm -hmm. when a few really cool cards, spoiler alert for this uh, episode, were released oh, yeah. and they just make so much sense mm -hmm. to be in this deck. 
So um, starting out, it says the first part of playing Gore Muldrak is managing creature counts. Sometimes you want to maximize the number of salamanders created. Others, you want to make sure that only the right players create them. Either way, spells like Acorn Catapult and Wrong Turn help to ensure everybody's population is under control. So really, we're talking about board state manipulation mm -hmm. here by giving players creatures or maybe exchanging creatures between players is a pretty big strategy. And really cool. Um, so we want to talk about those first two cards. Um, I'll start with Acorn Catapult, which we recently talked about. It is a artifact that costs four mana and has pay one and tap it. Our Acorn Catapult deals one damage to target creature or player. That creature's controller puts a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature onto the battlefield. Um, so you can deal one damage to one of your opponents, which is cool. You know, we're doing we're dealing direct damage here in Simic. Oh, yeah. Um, but then you give them a squirrel, which is a 1-1. One, one, and then at the end of turn, assuming that person has the most creatures, everyone else, or maybe you, would be able to get a 4-3 Salamander with Gore Maldrax trigger. Absolutely. Um, you could even give it to yourself in case you need a blocker or something. Um, and it is, I guess, uh, semi-important. Um, this is one of the cards that was updated uh, that it can also hit Planeswalkers. So the, the whole players um, in, in old text uh, was updated so that it can hit any permanent um, or the player themselves. So, uh, but we did talk about this on our FOMO episode. It is cheaper now. So hopefully uh, Micah didn't buy this card about a month ago or a couple <laughs> months ago when Chatterfang <laughs> came out and this one went up. So Wrong Turn uh, is an instant speed spell also from Commander Legends that is going to help uh, this deck in, in a combat trick type of, type of way. So Wrong Turn for two and a blue is an instant. It says target opponent gains control of target creature. So you're just going to... You know, give a creature away. Um, if that creature is attacking or blocking and it's in combat and you use wrong turn, it removes that creature from combat, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you, again, you can use it as an instant speed trick or you can just use it to make sure someone has just enough creatures on their board so that you get the sale, man. Yeah. And the next card is Cultural Exchange, another card that I think is really interesting and isn't played very often in 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 most decks. You might see this in like a Zedru the Great Hearted oh, deck, yeah. but sure. this works really, really well here. So it's a sorcery for four blue blue. It says, choose any number of creatures target player controls. Choose the same number of creature another target player controls. Those players exchange control of those creatures this this effect last indefinitely so it's not it's not just till end of turn so you can give away salamanders that you have in exchange for non salamander creatures and if you have war maldrak it says you and permanents you control have protection from salamanders so they they're going to be better used uh, to swing, I guess, at your opponents then if someone's got a 4-3 and perhaps they have three of them and someone else only has one of them now and, mm -hmm. you know, board states are changing a lot. But you're essentially getting yourself an army of, you know, protection from salamanders. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Peer Pressure is our next card. Uh, four mana sorcery, three and a blue. It says choose a creature type. If you control more creatures of that type than any other player, you gain control of all creatures of that type. Yeah. Chances are you're going to have more salamanders than your opponent as long as you are playing playing the the field right. Um, but maybe you can also do the same thing with warriors since you are actually making salamander warrior tokens here. Maybe you, you can trick people and, and actually end up stealing all of their warriors and everything. It, it's a very cool card. It's not going to help you put creatures on somebody else's board. It's really just there to steal all the creatures and set yourself up for a really big swing in the next turn. A card that I never had an, any chance to ever actually take advantage of. It was it was in my Gore Maldrak oh, okay. deck yeah. and, it, and I had never used it, but I really want to see it resolve and mm -hmm. everything just gets pulled to one board That'd be cool. um it happens i've, I've seen it happen and with everyone else but i would like to see it happen more often another card um this is a newer card from strixhaven is tempted by the orique so it's a sorcery for one blue 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 it says for each opponent gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value three or less so you can gain control of all those salamanders back so everybody else gets to make a salamander and you're going to grab three of them you're grabbing 12 power oh yeah for, for four mana that's that's three blockers they're going to get more salamanders yours have protection mm -hmm. so when you do swing they can't block your salamanders with their salamanders right, right. um 
which is also, I think, a really, really cool interaction. But this is this is stealing three different things, a card that I hadn't um, obviously considered because my deck had been taken apart before this. But I think this is a solid yeah. inclusion for this deck. Yeah, because because the upside is what you you don't necessarily have to take Salamanders. Let's some if someone's commander is three mana value or less. Yeah, you can steal their commander instead yep. and still their Salamanders can't block their commander that you're now swinging with. C- C- Correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's a card that uh, has a mechanic that I hate, and I'm just going to say that it's beginning. my favorite card in the whole deck. I'm I'm sure um, there is a combination with this card that I like that isn't in this deck. But uh, sudden substitution is an instant for two blue blue that has the mechanic split second. If you are unaware, split second says as long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Yes, you can sacrifice all of your creatures to Ashnod's altar and Phyrexian altar in response to a split second spell. That's pretty much it. And tap your lands and your mana rocks. Um, But Sudden Substitution says exchange control of target non-creature spell and target creature. Then the spell's controller may choose new targets for it. Probably the most common way you're going to be using this card is you're going to just take someone's spell and give them one of your salamanders. Yeah. So why not? Uh, But at the same time, you could take someone's creature and throw away an opt or something if you had if you had that or, or any other spell maybe it's a board wipe that it really doesn't matter if you control it or if your opponent controls it take one of their creatures um to help you know change how the board looks and how many creatures you have compared to theirs um there there is uh, i like the 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 way that you can play this with pacts um in the simic you can only play a pact of negation or a summoner's pact um Pact of Negation is an instant speed that says counter target spell, and you have to pay three blue blue at the beginning of your next upkeep or you lose the game. And Summoner's Pact is very similar in green, um, but you search your library for a creature and put it in your hand and you pay two green green uh, or you lose at the beginning of the next upkeep. But the cool part is, is you can sudden substitution one of these spells to one of your opponents that doesn't have the ability to produce that color, and then they will have to pay the mana at their upkeep. And if they can't produce the color and can't pay it, they lose the game. It's very niche, it and is. I've never seen it happen before. And I know, and every time one of this this card comes up, always. it's always brought up. And it's, you know, you're you're living the dream, I guess, if you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you've done it, let us know. Please, please let and us know. Clip it and send me the <laughs> clip. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think it's one of my favorite spells in the deck. I think it's one of the best decks that can take advantage of some su- sudden substitution. Although it can be played in any blue deck, to be fair. Yeah. And, and I feel very much like the way that I built Gore Muldrak is very different from the way that Micah has built it, which I like. Mm-hmm. It's it, there's it, I, I looked even at my deck list to compare and they're they're very different, yeah. which I like to see. And and the next card is one that I, I hadn't actually considered. It works really, really well in mm-hmm. the deck, which is Ward of Bones, an artifact for six colorless mana. It says each opponent who controls more creatures than you cannot cast creature spells. The same is true for artifacts and enchantments. And then each opponent who controls more lands than you cannot play lands. So since the deck is kind of playing catch up in some instances, yep. and with my experience playing Gore Maldrak in the past, I have often seen that I had the least amount of creatures, sure. just the way that I had built it. Mm-hmm. Um, your opponents can't play creatures that they had. It, that they have in hand or even their commander because it, it it's creatures right so you, you just can't play i guess if your commander is a planeswalker you can play your commander that's true so benefits to planeswalkers as commanders ward of bones um but i think this is this is one of those cards that it's gonna draw artifact hate yeah and this is one you're like I don't really, yeah, go for I'm it. not mad if I lose this because it, it did its job if it lasts around the table once or twice, mm-hmm. you know, I think mean, it's a very cool card. Um, I don't want to play against it, but <laughs> well, that's very true. I mean, but, but, but like you said, if someone's using the removal spell on Ward of Bones instead of Gore Muldrak, that's a win. Exactly. Your, for sure. A hundred percent. So Primal Vigor uh, is one of our token doubling uh, enchantments is the only token doubling enchantment in this deck. Um, one it's i think it's the most affordable token doubler other than adrix and nev um but primal Vi- oh yeah adrix and nev is in the deck as well uh primal vigor is an enchantment for four and a green that says if one or more tokens we put onto the battlefield twice that many of those tokens are put on the battlefield instead and if one or more plus one plus one counters will be placed on a creature twice that many plus one plus one counters are placed on that creature instead so it's a doubling season like effect but it doesn't double all counters just plus one plus one counters um, but the unique part of this is it's a global enchantment so this not, on- not only works for your board state but also your opponent opponent's board states so you can have them start getting 
getting two salamanders at your end step or yourself getting two salamanders. Um, but it also, you know, you have to watch out. So if you're playing against a token deck, they might start getting out of control. But then again, once they start getting out of control, they're no longer going to get salamanders from Primal Vigor. Yeah, this is this is a time when you are actually happy to play Primal Vigor because right. you're you already want your your opponents to take advantage of getting creatures. You're already giving it to them anyway, so mm -hmm. you might as well give double. Yeah. Um, I this is a solid card for this for sure. deck. Yeah, you could create eight power for your opponents that you have protection from. Absolutely. I mean, it's potentially if you give it to all of your opponents, it's 24 power you can produce on your end step that you and all permanents you control have protection from. Yeah. Fantastic. And then another card that it's a very niche card, probably not played in very many commander decks. This is Teferi's Veil, an enchantment for one and a blue that says whenever a creature you control attacks, it phases out at the end of combat. While it's phased out, it's treated as though it doesn't exist. It phases back in just before you untap doing your next untap step. So if you're swinging with all of your creatures, whether they're Salamanders or not, they're going to phase out, assuming you don't swing with Gore Muldrak, right? You keep Gore Muldrak up. When they phase out after combat, you will be left with likely one creature, or you can manipulate it so that you have just the least, whatever you want it to be. Yep. You will be the only person then who gets a Salamander with Gore Muldrak's trigger. This is very cool. Yeah, this gets around, you know, we talked about swinging with salamanders and trying to trade in combat. And some people, you know, well, one, um, you're going to have protection from salamanders, so they're not going to be able to block with their salamanders, so they would have to block with their creatures. Maybe they don't have favorable blocks and they let things through. This is a way to allow you to remove your tokens and they're going to come back on, on your step. They're going to be tapped anyways, so you're not going to be able to block with them. Teferi's Veil, very, very cool. Yes. Um, all right, so. Going back to Micah, since so much card draw results from new salamanders entering the battlefield, if any don't die in combat, you want ways to sacrifice them or have them temporarily removed from the battlefield in the case of the aforementioned Teferi's Veil. Many of Blue and Green's removal options like Resculpt and Beast Within feed into this by replacing your opponent's actual threatening permanence with creatures that may uh, get them or that may let them get a salamander. So we're talking about uh, card draw when salamanders enter the battlefield um, and removal spells that replace the creature with a token so that, you know, they don't actually lose the number of creatures that they have on board. They're, they stay exactly the same. Or maybe if you remove a different kind of permanent, you can increase the number of creatures that they have. Uh, and the first uh, enchantment here is Elemental Bond. Um, so Elemental Bond is a... A uh, three mana enchantment that says um, whenever a creature with power three uh, enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. So salamanders being four power three toughness, every time you make one or multiple for each one that comes in, you're going to be able to draw a card. Yeah. And then Gar Garrick's Uprising, which is very similar, an enchantment for two and a green says whenever it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you draw a card. Um, and, and like Elemental Bond being three or greater, we don't. We don't care if it's three or four because yeah. the, the salamanders are four. So you're going to hit it no matter what. Exactly. Um, it also says creatures you control have trample. And then it also says whenever a creature with power four or greater enters a battlefield under your control, you draw a card. So you get one when it enters. And then when the salamanders enter, if you've got a primal vigor, you've got Adrix and Nev, you've got a whatever you have and you're getting multiple, you're going to get multiple card draw. Yeah. One more permanent that cares about card draw with entering the battlefield is Kiora Behemoth Beckoner from War of the Spark. Uh, this is one of those only minus loyalty um, planeswalkers that they printed there. So for two and then a hybrid green blue, you get a Kiora that enters with seven loyalty counters that has the static whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card and has a minus one to untap target permanent. So not only is this going to allow you to draw some extra cards every time salamanders come in, but it also acts as pseudo ramp because you can untap lands or rocks, um, pseudo vigilance by untapping your creatures, a, a lot of potential here with this planeswalker and now we don't only care or micah doesn't only care about etb effects of draw cards there's other permanent permanents here that are going to be able to get us um some some card advantage uh based on those salamanders cards like bonders enclave a land that taps for colorless or you can pay three and, and tap it to draw a card only if you control a creature with power four or greater yeah, sometimes we have some instant speed stuff like Return of the Wild Speaker for four and a green. Uh, you get to choose one to either draw a card equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, which will most likely be four power, um, controlling a Salamander Warrior, but also has the other ability of non-human
human creatures you control get plus three plus three so turning all your salamanders into seven power salamanders for a big swing um, could definitely win you the game so maybe this is a game closer as well yeah a life's legacy a sorcery for one and a green it says as an additional cost to cast the spell you have to sacrifice a creature so if you have your salamander your it says draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power so for one and a green draw four i um that that's great. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. Yes, please. And you're going to continue to you know manipulate your own board state that way by sacrificing your creatures, which is great. Um, greater good is actually an enchantment where we can do that repeatedly uh, on the same turn uh, or on anyone's turn, really. Greater good for two green green. You get an enchantment that says sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature power, then discard three cards. So you're only going to be netting one card each time, but at least you're going to be able to see four cards and then choose which three cards from your hand to discard. It's not like uh, brainstorm where you have to choose like from those three cards or no brainstorm you don't have to choose from those three cards like sylvan library where you would have to choose from the three cards not like that so greater good you're going to see four cards every time yep and then orin frostfang a two six snake that costs three green green it says attacking creatures you control have death touch and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player draw a card so here if they have a lot of uh, salamanders and you have Gore Maldrak out. Um, they're not going to be able to block, which is great. Now, if you don't have Gore Maldrak out, this is like more incentive for them to still not block mm -hmm. because you're attacking creatures have death touch. And if if they, you know, if you don't have Gore Maldrak and they need to block, they're going to lose their creatures because yours have death touch, assuming theirs aren't indestructible or whatever. Right. Um, or you're going to get through and you're going to draw a bunch of cards with your creatures. There's no downside. It's pretty great. So Toski, Bearer of Secrets, is doing something similar. Uh, so for three and a green, you get a legendary creature, Squirrel 1-1, one, one, that can't be countered, is indestructible, um, whenever, and it, it must attack if able, but also has whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Uh, I don't want to, uh, or I do want to press that indestructible is a very, very strong keyword. Uh, if you had enchantments with indestructible that did something similar to this, it would be insane, especially for only four mana. This yeah. is a great card. It's a great card. And then my one of my other favorites in this deck, and actually just a favorite that I think is just really good in Commander in general, is Biden of Thassa. I don't know what it is. I've seen less and less of this card recently, and I I feel like anytime I need card draw, I'm adding this in pretty oh, yeah. pretty pretty quickly. So Biden of Thassa is a legendary enchantment artifact for two blue blue that says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. It also has an activated ability that I feel like no one else ever activates, which is where the power in this, I mean, okay, it's not where the only power in this card lies, but a lot of power lies in this. And right. it says pay one and a blue and tap it. Creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. So not only are you getting card advantage similar to that Orin Frostfang or, um, you know, Toski Bear of Secrets, the, the, but... But here we have the added effect of being able to essentially, I'm um, air quotes, goad. So forcing your opponent's creatures to, to attack. Um, now it doesn't say um, they can't attack you. They can, they can attack you. Yeah. But if you have Gore Maldrak and, and you were able to, you know, manipulate the board that you've got four blockers and it, and it's literally, there's no reason for them to swing at you. Right. Um, that hopefully they will swing at your opponent. Yeah. Well, especially if they have nothing but salamanders, they wouldn't be able to swing at you anyways. Yeah. And and I think this was the biggest strategy, at least that I relied on when yeah. I had built Gorm Maldrak was forced combat, which we don't see a ton here, which I actually really like. Mm -hmm. I was playing on um, cards from that the impetus cycle. So oh, you yeah. would enchant a creature to force it to attack. Um and then it wouldn't obviously attack you. So you give them salamanders that you have protection from. And then the thing that you don't have protection from, you just goad. For sure. Um, so I, I think this does a lot here. And then you you even added a note here that in combination with Kiora Behemoth Beckoner, um, if, if you can get your creature and you can activate this more than one time, if you have a way to untap mm -hmm. the Biden of Thassa. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah do it more than once, which is which is cool. Um, there are like two other enchantments that are at this mana value that sometimes we talk about, uh, Coastal Piracy and Reconnaissance Mission. Mm -hmm. This is by far the best of the three, especially for this. Uh, I, you can argue Reconnaissance Mission is better in a cycling deck because it doesn't yeah, have cycling for two, of course. But, but Coastal Piracy is just a four mana enchantment that lets you draw cards. Doesn't have this extra caveat. Maybe it dodges some removal because it's not an artifact, but really Biden of Thassa is the one that you want to do. Um, but how about another commander that you used to uh, own here? And that's 
Edric, Spy Master of Trust. Oh, yes. Very, very fun card. Uh huh. So for three mana, a one, a green, and a blue, you get a legendary creature, Elf Rogue 2-2. It says, whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. So this is not only card draw for you when you hit your opponents, but it's card draw for your opponents when they hit your opponents, giving even more incentive for them to swing those salamanders that couldn't swing at you anyways, all at your opponents. Yeah, and and the card draw really matters when you're playing Gore Maldrak against a color that has or a, or a build specifically that knows that they lack card advantage. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're playing, and I I, always, I hate to say let's go back to mono white, but you sometimes I've seen decks built in colors that can draw a lot of cards, and they just didn't throw a lot of card draw into it, you right. know, because whatever it was doing is a powerful enough strategy. Right. But if you if you're just gonna hand me salamanders and tell me to swing so that I can draw a card, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna swing so I can draw a card, and it it. That is the worst situation when you're the person who has to go just after the Gore Maldrak player. Yes. If you have to swing, you lose yours, and so does whoever that blocked. Mm-hmm. The person after you then has the open, yes. open spot They're to the get They're the ones in. that are really going to draw the cards. So you always want, I feel like with this build, and it's so funny when you sit down at a table, I would I like to, I would want to be kitty corner mm-hmm. from the Gore Maldrak player. I want someone in between us. Yeah. Kitty corner, I'm okay. I'm picturing a square table. That's and true. so kitty corner. But if it's a circle, a circular table, I want them across from me. Yes, you want them directly. Yeah, across. I just want someone between us, is what I'm trying to say. And mm-hmm. I think Edric is a great card. It's also nice because it kind of keeps the game moving. It right? does. You, you, you're avoiding board stalls because people just want to draw some cards. Yeah, it's definitely doing exactly what Micah's intention is, and that's getting people to swing. Getting each people other. to swing. So, um, some more information from Micah's deck. Removal spells in this deck are unique in a way that it leaves a creature token behind this is often seen as a drawback to some removal spells right you 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 remove something you give someone a treasure you remove something you give someone a beast you're like ah, i wish you didn't have you know sometimes go for the throat is better right you just pay one and a black you can remove something sure. and it's gone um but these spells are great because with gore muldrak you're keeping the board state steady for the salamander creation and the manipulation of who's going to receive them so cards like re-sculpt here for one and a blue for an instant that says exile target artifact or creature its controller creates a four four blue and red elemental creature token so you remove whatever it is that you didn't have protection from they're going to get a four four blue and red elemental um you still don't have protection from that, but maybe later you can just exchange that bird with the salamander, and now your your bird elemental has pro salamanders. Yeah, um, and notably, uh, the four toughness on this elemental uh, matches the four power on the salamanders, and they will trade with each other. So uh, I like that, and I do really like the fact that this is exile effect. Um, so you know, you just replace someone's indestructible Eldrazi with a four-four that trades with your Salamander. That's what I really want to see. Uh, Beast Within is a very common green removal spell. I play it in every green deck that I have, uh, as long as the the mana value isn't restricted by some sort of companion, I suppose. Beast Within for two and a green is an instant that says destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a three-three green beast creature token. So again, you can go and remove someone's creature and uh, replace it with a 3-3 beast, or you can remove literally any other permanent. You could remove a land uh, and replace it with a 3-3 beast, um, you know, any sort of problematic thing uh, and increase the number of creatures that that uh, player has. But Curse of the Swine probably has to be my favorite card out of any of these in this category of removal that replaces with tokens. Uh, Curse of the Swine is an X blue blue sorcery that says exile X target creatures for each creature exiled this way. Its controller creates a 2-2 green board creature token. So um, not only is it exile effect, but it can be potentially a board wipe exile effect that turns uh, turns, I, I use in air quotes, those creatures into 2-2 two, two green boars that don't actually trade with your salamanders. So now your salamanders are the strongest power and toughness on the board after after a resolution of the spell. Yeah, they won't want to swing at you with those. Um, also, the next one is something that can trade with a salamander. This is Pongify for one blue mana. It's instant speed. It says destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green ape creature token. You know what's funny? Recently, I have seen a lot of regeneration in mm. my pods. I, I've been playing, I've played quite a few games so far this year, and I I've seen regenerate be relevant in three games already nice. that I've actually written in the in my free form notes. Yeah. Regenerate is a problem. Yeah. Like it was a problem, right. you know, and that's cool to see. Pongify, you, you can't regenerate. We actually talked about that last week too. An enchantment that sacrifice a creature, target creature gains or regenerates or whatever, and Wrath of God being a really good board wipe. So 
wow, it's really cool to see uh, real life reflect what we talk about. Right. Um, how about another salamander that was printed in Commander Legends that we can slot in as a removal spell? Amphin Mutineer for three and a blue. You get a three, three salamander pirate. So this is actually going to be your weakest salamander by one power. Um, when Amphin Mutineer enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non salamander creature. That creature's controller creates a 4-3 blue salamander warrior creature token. So you're going to have protection from that token anyway. So why not kill it and give him another salamander? But it has a special ability Encore. So for four blue blue, you can exile the card from your graveyard. And for each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste and you sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. You can only activate it as a sorcery. But this is going to allow you to replace three of your opponent's creatures with four or three salamanders. Again, a creature that you have protection from. Yeah. So when it comes to maximizing the salamanders, um, Micah actually says they, they want more gore, which <laughs> is very gore Yeah, yep. I got it. OK, uh -huh. it was very good. I that appreciated the thoughtful explanation behind the primer here. It was really <laughs> great. Um, and cards like Sakashima's um, or, or Spark Double can make easy copies. Double Major and Helm of the Host create tokens that can um, double and, and you know populate later. So playing clone spells that ignore the legendary rule. Um, so with the legendary creature, you can only control one of them at a time. You have to sacrifice one. Um, there are a few few cards here that that ignore that, so it, it, it's okay to have more than one. Um, like Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, one of my my favorite cards from Commander Legends. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces is a three one human rogue for three and a blue that says you may have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities, um, which says the legend rule does not apply to permanents that you control. So this is one of the partners that came out in Commander Legends, and you can play this out as a copy of Gore Muldrak or maybe something even better if you've sudden substitutioned and so stole oh, something great true. or cultural exchange. So you take maybe their commander that is really, really strong. You know, mm. maybe you steal a Kamal that pumps that combat and you want a second, whatever. But in, in a lot of cases here, you're going to make an extra Gora Maldrak, which is going to make even more Salamanders at the end of turn. Yeah. Um, another Sakashima here, Sakashima the Imposter is a four mana, two blue, blue human rogue, three one. That says a Sakashima the Imposter comes into play you may choose a creature in play if you do sakashima comes into play as a copy of that creature except its name is still sakashima the imposter it's still legendary and it gains pay to blue blue to return sakashima the imposter to its owner's hand at the end of turn um, so this is again uh, it, it's going to keep its name sakashima so for all intents and purposes it's going to be a gore Muldrak, except by name which is going to get around the legendary rule but i also like the fact that you can have sakashima return to your hand at end of turn with the activated ability allow you to use it some more and it, it even you can stack it in a way at your end step to have Sakashima return to your hand before your final Gore Muldrak trigger resolves. And go, when Gore Muldrak is looking at the number of creatures you have to see who gets the Salamander, it's at the resolution of the ability, not when the ability goes on the stack. So you can actually... Oh, just take one of your gold mold drags back so that I get the next yeah, salamander. Yeah, I get the next salamander. And then uh, next we have Spark Double. So this is a zero zero illusion creature uh, for three and a blue. It says you may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature, and it enters with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker, and it is not legendary if that permanent is legendary. So you can get a second Gore Maldrak here. Um, um, and, and it's just going to be stronger than your Gore Maldrex. It's going to get a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then the, the nice thing here is if you did lose your original Gore Maldrak, you still have this one, and then you have the other Gore Maldrak sitting in the command zone to cast again later. Mm -hmm. I did find myself doing that a lot in, in this type of in this type of deck where right. you know what? I, I have one. Uh, if, you know, someone plays something where I have to sack a creature. I'm I might just sack my original Gore Muldrak, right? Because I'm going to get a Salamander from the one that I get to keep, and I'm not. It feels like I'm not losing a card, right? Right. It's going to cost a little bit more now, mm -hmm. but it's you know I get to use it again later. Yeah, it's only it's. I mean, it's probably going to get killed eventually anyway, so you might as well. Uh, and you and you probably don't have reanimation spells in your deck to do that. Um, Another card from Strixhaven, probably one that you wish existed. This is the one that I really wish oh, that we had. Yeah. So, um, so this is a a dual side card uh, or modal double face card. This is Augmentor Pugilist. 
uh, which is a three mana, one green, green troll druid, three, three with trample. This is as long as you control eight or more lands, Augmenter Pugilist gets plus five, plus five. That's not the important part. Echoing Equation on the other half of the card is the important part for this deck. So for three blue, blue, you get a sorcery that says choose target creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn, except those creatures aren't legendary if the chosen creature is legendary. And that until end of turn, is really, really important because you can make all of your salamanders into Gore Moldrax and at the end of turn, make a bunch of salamanders before they turn back into their original salamander form. Yeah. It's really cool. It's a really cool card for this. Yeah, it's it's a really good card. One that, um, I, you know, I'm not sure how often the actual Augmenter Pugilist would be relevant. It It's possible that's what you want to do, right? An 8-8 um, for 3, there's, there's nothing to laugh at. There. But Echoing Equation is nuts. And I did not realize that this was how that worked. Mm -hmm. That is that is nuts. Oh, yeah. So, so like, strong. So strong. Yeah, token decks that want to make a bunch of your own commander. Heck yeah. Another another card that is going to actually make a copy of a creature here is double major. So for a green and a blue, you get an instant that says copy target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if that spell is legendary. So you do have to do this while your spell is on the stack. So when you cast score Maldrak, you can cast double major or any other legendary creature that you have. We do we haven't gone over the creatures yet, but there are some legendary creatures that mm -hmm. would be wonderful to have more than one copy of. And then later you can you can populate or make extra copies. We already know that we have token doublers right. in, in the deck. So if you're doing this late game, you, you might get two or four, depending on how many of those doublers mm -hmm. you ha have out. Absolutely. Uh, Helm of the Host is similarly going to be making token creature copies of your legendary that can get doubled by these doublers. Uh, Helm of the Host is a four mana legendary artifact equipment. So four generic mana at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of the equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste and is equipped for five. So it's nine mana to equip to Gore Muldrak, which is pretty steep, but then you immediately get a hasty Gore Muldrak. It doesn't go away at the end step or anything like that. And, and if you have a token doubler, you'll get two every time you go to combat and, and just be making more and more and more salamanders. Yeah, it, it's really good. It works really well with with Adrix and Nev, Primal Vigor. Um, and then if opponents cast anything that allow you to double, if someone else has a Primal oh, yeah. primal Vigor as well, you can take advantage of that. Yeah, I really like this Selesnia Eulogist that has a Populate ability. So Selesnia Eulogist is a three mana, three, three for two and a green uh, that says, or that has an activated ability of pay two and a green to exile target creature card from a graveyard, then populate. So you're going to be able to keep making extra tokens, whether that's your four, three salamander or your double major, uh, double decor Muldrak is, you know, depending on the board state, but it's repeatable graveyard hate for a really big advantage. I really like this card here. Yeah. So Micah also says that blue has a lot of ways to change creature types from cards like standardized to Anthem Mutineer. You'll often find that your opponent's threats was really just a salamander all along. Oh. <laughs> so cards like Metamorphic Alliteration and Mystic Reflection can pull double duty, allowing us to really render a potential threat, a salamander, or upgrade something into another copy of Gore Maldrax. So taking full of Gore Maldrax ability and granting protection from salamanders by turning our other opponents non-salamanders into salamanders is something that I really enjoyed because it feels like you're playing politics with this portion of, right. of of your build. So someone's looking at it and they go, okay, you've only got two creatures. I have three and one of them is, I don't know, a 10, 10, but maybe it doesn't have trample, sure. you know, and you can just show them, mm, I, you know, I, some of these are permanents too, and not even right. just spells. Right. And so some of them are always sitting around and presenting a threat. Mm -hmm. um, so you can pretty much make sure that they're not going to swing at you. But the first card here is standardized. Standardized is an instant for blue, blue that says choose creature type other than wall. Each creature becomes that type until end of turn. So if someone's swinging out a huge swing at you and you've got hopefully enough blockers or maybe enough that you can, you know, stave off some of that damage. You turn everything into a, a, the salamander creature type. You have protection from salamanders. You're going to knock out hopefully uh, some stuff during that combat trick. Yeah. Even if you don't have blockers, it just acts as a fog at that way. So mm -hmm. really, really cool. Uh, Amiiboy Changeling is a card that even I've played in, in some of my Changeling decks. Uh, if for one and a blue, you get a creature shapeshifter, which has Changeling, which is a salamander and a warrior in case you're interested, has two activated abilities of 
tap target creature gains all creature types till end of turn or tap target creature loses all creature types until end of turn and amiibo changeling is a one one so this is just going to be an instant speed this creature is not going to deal damage to me or my permanence this turn I exactly a another one is image crafter so it's a one one wizard for one blue and it says tap choose creature type other than legend or wall so this is a very old card um and it says uh, target creatures type becomes that type until end of turn so you've got some redundancy there and these two they just sit out and yeah. you know i'm not going to swing my huge thing at you because you have i have protection from it yeah and i'm probably not going to be using a removal spell on this one one wizard yeah, probably definitely not but that's the power of that really wizard is. <laughs> um so a repeatable effect we also have on an enchantment of unnatural selection for one in a blue you get an enchantment that has pay one generic mana choose a creature type other than wall target creatures type becomes that type until end of turn so if an opponent's swinging with 10 creatures and you have 10 mana all 10 of those creatures are salamanders now baby yeah, another card here, Metamorphic Alliteration. So this is a, an enchantment aura for one and a blue. It says enchant creature. As Metamorphic Alliteration enters the battlefield, choose a creature. Enchanted creature is a copy of the chosen creature. So if you've given something away and you want a copy of it yourself, you can turn a creature into that. If you want maybe to get rid of one of your opponent's commanders, you can play this on another one of their problematic creatures, make them choose. Um, they're going to have to sacrifice their commander. It doesn't get around, around the legend rule, this is a cool way to get rid of one of your opponent's commanders. Mm -hmm. um, you could also turn one of your opponent's creatures into a Gore Muldrak if you know you're going to have the smallest board state to guarantee you're going to get an extra Salamander on their turn. But you do have the drawback of now they have protection from Salamanders. So, so now those the poor two people who have no Gore Muldrak <laughs> yes. are in, uh, in the red zone. And, and they're calling uh, pest control because there's too many Salamanders around. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mystic Reflection from Call Time is a very cool card. Didn't think about this one uh, for this deck. It's an instant for one and a blue. It says choose target non-legendary creature. The next time one or more creatures or planeswalker enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. It also has foretell, so you can pay two to turn it um, face down. And then on any other turn, you can cast it for one blue rather than one and a blue. Um, so if you have a big turn or if you see someone trying to resolve an Avenger of Zendikar or something, you could Mystic Reflection, turn all of their zero one plants into four three salamanders and that might sound terrifying to most people out there to turn zero power into like 28 power but again you have protection from it they'll swing it somewhere else i'm sure <laughs> yeah exactly i'm gonna turn them all into salamanders you yeah. don't you definitely don't want that swing to be at me no well you can't and there's cards here that i do like that um they're they're more uh i i guess um they, they fuel the way the strategy works, like mm -hmm. a Balagad Recovery. Yes. Uh, really great card. It's a land on one side, but it, it'll return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So you can bring back that standardize and then someone sees, uh, oh, oh, they're holding it and they have they have double blue. Oh, they're, mm. they're probably going to use that. And then my swing at them is not going to do anything. So I guess I'll just swing at Coil instead. Oh, why does it have to be me? Why do I get targeted? Because you the probably time? have... A lot. You you're not gonna have very many salamanders, but you'll be far ahead some other Some reason. somehow, yeah. No, <laughs> you'll have nine hundred sure. life from your Iker Shadiki deck. That, and, that's how. And at least nine Iker Shadiki. And and at least nine of them. So there's other really fun cards in this deck that didn't really fit into any of these categories. And the first one here is actually a card that I Never had in my deck because I could not find a copy of it because it was printed in the M19 gift pack. Mm -hmm. It's the only printing of Angler Turtle, which is a 5-7 hexproof turtle for 5 blue blue that says creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able. Never thought I'd see this on a blue creature, but whoa, this is cool. It, it, I could not find it at any of our LGSs. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I, I, I didn't really... I was not sure if the deck was something that I was going to love sure. or not. So I didn't order an angler turtle. I'm so happy to see that this is here because it's like one of those cards, like a pursued whale that forces combat oh, yeah. because you're giving someone a goblin that for all those cards, like the impetus cycle. That's what I was trying to do. So mm -hmm. angler turtle in this deck is is probably my fa one of my favorite things to see here Very after cool. sudden substitution. Now I like seeing some of these old cards. This this next one is from Scourge uh, that I've never heard of before. Uh, that that maybe will help other people look at their um, 
their tribal decks, and, and maybe you can find a place for this particular enchantment, Faces of the Past. So for two and a blue, um, you get an enchantment that says, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, tap or untap all creatures that share a creature type with it. So um, whether or not you are, you could attack with all of your salamanders, and before blockers are declared, you can instantly sacrifice one of your creatures, tap all salamanders, and then, um, you know, or actually if an opponent is attacking with their salamanders, add another opponent who can actually block with their salamanders. You can then maybe sacrifice one of your salamanders, tap all salamanders that are out there. Now they can't block with their salamanders. Now the swing might be for lethal. These are just the situations that came up with my head. That's wild. Another card, Azuri's Predation. So this is a very popular card of sorcery for five green, green, green. For each creature your opponent's control, create a 4-4 green Phyrexian beast creature token each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures so this works with that the power uh being at four you've got card draw with your uh elemental bond and your garrick's uprising they can trade with salamanders if you've got a doubler out this mm -hmm. is a perfect card for this deck yeah and actually if you have gore muldrak out it just kills the salamanders because your guys have yours protection. have protection Heck yeah this yes. is awesome i'm so glad that they reprinted this in the commander legends ac pre-con i believe it was um propaganda and uh, uh dissipation field are two enchantments that uh micah plays in order to prevent people from attacking uh himself so propaganda is a three mana enchantment for two and a blue that says creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you obviously that doesn't prevent them from doing it but it deters them dissipation field is very similar uh, in a deterrent it doesn't prevent but for two blue blue you get an enchantment that says whenever a permanent deals damage to you return it to its owner's hand this is also kind of an extra uh, if you lose gore muldrak and people start swinging their salamanders at you they're going to bounce the token which ultimately makes it cease to exist right and then finally one of the the game enders here coat of arms an artifact that costs five colorless mana and it says each creature you control, or I guess it's five generic, not five colors. Mm. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. So um, <laughs> we're making a lot of a lot of salamanders and everybody's going to have those salamanders. Oh, yeah. So if you can steal them somehow or just say go to town, I have protection. So even though, uh, you know, there's eight salamanders out and they're all getting plus eight, plus eight, and then. You know, warrior is not an uncommon no, creature type not. to see. So maybe even bigger. It's fine. Don't just don't swing at me because mine are just going to take yours out. Mm -hmm. um, yours will do nothing to me. Hopefully we have the most creatures. Yes. When we've played the coat of arms, we're, we're doing that when we have the most creatures. <laughs> um, but this ends games. I love seeing coat of arms. And it's also great because if you do have Gore Muldrak out and your opponents only have salamanders, you have protection from them. Right. So you're just going to be able to swing in and take them out anyway. Yeah. It's one of those cards you 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 do have to play it strategically though yeah. uh, to make sure you don't you don't get the the backlash. But this is this is the deck, and we've had a great time putting this this deck together. And Micah, thank you so much for your support. Now is part of the show where we want to send maybe some of our suggestions to you. Oh yeah. Um. So I think my my favorite one actually, and one that just seems very not even very showy is arcane lighthouse it, it's a land that taps for for a colorless and it has pay one generic and tap it until end of turn creatures your opponents control lose hexproof and shroud and can't have hexproof or shroud so with the fact that there's quite a few um ways to exchange creature tokens i think this is pretty relevant because someone's going to put the boots or the lightning greaves or you know whatever on a creature to give it hexproof oh, yeah. or shroud you're gonna say not today mm -hmm. and you're just gonna <laughs> then you can trade away a salamander and gain control of, of their creature oh for sure i i think that arcane lighthouse is a pretty cool card for for a deck like this that does do a pretty good amount of um you know targeting and then maybe even adding in combination because it does tap for colorless you are in a two color deck so it's probably not too big of a deal to have a few colorless for lands, sure, but for even sure. adding Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. So if you don't need to use it, it can still tap for green later. And then all of your your lands can tap for green. For sure. It's so. a good point. It's like, a, I mean, Yavamaya is just, is it's, it's Urborg, but for forests and I guess it really should probably be played in any green plus something else. Maybe. Deck. I'm not sure if it's there yet, but I think here it fits really well, especially yeah. if we're going to add a few more colorless lands. Yeah. Well, let's stick with with another land here real quick. One that I really, really, really enjoy 
um, is Forbidden Orchard. It's a rainbow land, so it can tap for one mana of any color, but whenever you tap it for mana, target opponent creates a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token. This is a spirit that's on the ground that I often re refer to as a garbage ground spirit. So <laughs> why not? Why not? You know, give a token to one of your opponents, manipulate their board state so that they won't get a salamander and you give them just a, a trashy one one spirit that cannot fly. Wow. For all the spirit fans, um, I apologize on the behalf for of all the ground spirit, <laughs> fans. ground spirit <laughs> fans. Yeah, no, it's a very strong. Card. I do want to see like a hockey jersey now where it's ground spirits or something. Ground and spirits. They have a logo. I would buy that. And then you have like the foam finger that says like number one fan. Yeah. But the back is one one. It's always one one. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Another card I liked in um, seeing in a Gore Maldrick deck is Lawan Cephalid Empress. So this is a 2-3 legendary Cephalid Noble for three and a blue. It says when it enters the battlefield, return all blue creatures your opponent's control to their hands so you can remove all of their salamanders. If they're in blue, it's very unfortunate because it also says your opponents can't cast blue creature spells. Oops. Now, most blue decks aren't playing blue – like a ton sure. of creatures. I, I typically see spell slinger decks. Mm -hmm. I mean, Orvar just wants Orvar because they're just going to play spells and make right. more things. Right. Um, so it can be maybe a little too uh, oppressive, mm -hmm. but if you needed a way to get rid of those salamanders or if, if someone listening is looking to build this deck, it's a very cool card to add if you're looking for, for sure. an addition to a Gord Maldrick deck. Yeah, this card in particular would hose my, uh, my Tetsuko Umazawa deck, which focuses on blue creatures. Uh, that's true. <laughs> um, Domineering Will. Uh, this one was only printed one time back in Commander 2014, and, and I hadn't heard of it before I started doing some research on this deck, but this is a pretty cool. So for three and a blue, you get an instant that says, target player gains control of up to three target non-attacking creatures until end of turn. Untap those creatures. They block this turn if able. So you can either you know force someone to block with creatures, uh, with someone else's creatures, and make sure that things trade to the salamanders, um, or you can actually do it in someone's second main phase to just manipulate board state, make sure that one person... It's not going to get the salamander that you don't want to get. Uh, and then they'll just return back uh, at the end of turn. Yeah. And my last one here, I can't do this without a combo. Every time I have to do it. And this is this is a card where you're giving something away, which you know already fits with the deck anyway, which is donate in combination with cards like Xenograft, Maskwood Nexus, or Arcane Adaptation. So essentially, you're going to play a, a, a permanent, you're going to give it away. And after you've played that permanent, you're going to gain protection essentially from that player, assuming you have Gore Maldrax. So cards like Arcane Adaptation that are an enchantment that when they enter the battlefield, you choose a creature type. And then it says creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is true for spells you control and creatures you own that aren't on the battlefield. Xenograft is uh, an enchantment. Uh, you again enters, you choose Salamander here. It says each creature you control is the chosen type. Then Maskwood Nexus says creatures you control are every creature type and again the same is true for spells you control and, and things that you don't own, that you own that aren't on the battlefield so you play those out you name salamander and then you cast donate so it's a sorcery for two and a blue it says target player gains control of target permanent you control it is a lot to put into you it does require two things for your plan to come together so right. if you wanted maybe consistency you probably want to run all four but i just had to mention it because it does work in this deck for sure you know, i'm going to give you this xenograft and unless you remove it everything that you have is a salamander and as long as i have enough creatures you're just not going to be able to swing through at me if you are in the late game and there's only two of you left mm -hmm. it, it's I your opponent has to find an answer. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, donate is a reserve list card. Just oh, I did want to mention is true. that. true. Um, but it's only like it's under fifteen dollars right now, which is pretty rare for a reserve list in card. In foil though, it's <laughs> like two hundred and thirty. But you know, so go for the foil. Show us the real bling. And that was that was my last um, my last suggestion. Yes. I really I really think that that's really fun to see in, in a deck like this. And and my last one here is going to be a card that's that's almost identical to a card that Micah you already play Pongnify. This is Rapid Hybridization. It's a one blue instant destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. And that creature's controller creates a three three green frog lizard creature token. And and maybe you don't have this because you don't want more of one of that ability. But but let me let me break it down for you just real quick. If you had a rule zero conversation with your pod and you somehow convinced people that frog lizard and salamander are basically the same <laughs> thing without the context of telling them about rapid hybridization, well, now you just got a new way to make another salamander. And that's a rule zero convo. And 
I'm sorry that we put it on a podcast <laughs> oh, no, and no, now no. everyone's going to know, but try it out with people that maybe won't. Yeah. Rapid hybridization, getting a, a, a salamander in air quotes. Mm-hmm. This was a lot of fun. Thank you everybody for joining us this week. If you want to find us online, you can find me on Twitter at Andy Flory. And you can find me on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. And of course, I want to give a special thanks to Ryan Nichols, our producer and editor. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And Chris Wolf, who handles all of our graphic design. Thank you for everything that you do. And to all the listeners out there, we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.